So, hey guys, this is Michael at the Spine Center. We always strive to use the best technology and to stay up with what's going on in the industry to tell our stories. So, we decided that, um, well, a little bit of background on myself. Uh, I first learned to edit using Final Cut Pro 7, which at the time was pretty much the industry leader. And it was great. I learned editing techniques. Uh, when Final Cut Pro 10 was released, I played around with it a little bit, but I wasn't at the time really impressed. That's changed since then. But uh, instead of switch staying with Final Cut, I decided to switch over to the Adobe Creative Cloud. So I was using Premiere and After Effects uh, for editing and special effects, res respectively. Um, then Blackmagic Design took DaVinci Resolve, a color correcting software, and made it into an editor. And I loved it. It was very similar to Final Cut 7 and Premiere, so it was really easy to edit on. Uh, but I was always fascinated by Fusion. I had never done node-based special effects before, and I was really curious to see what it was. I was very used to After Effects layer-based special effects, but I could never really wrap my head around what nodes were. I would sit down and play with it for a little bit, and I just didn't get it. So. At NAB 2017, 2018, it's 2018, at NAB 2018, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion combined, and Blackmagic put them together into one software. So I decided I was going to force myself to learn a little bit of Fusion if it killed me. And it has not killed me yet, which is awesome. Um, what I did was I first went to go look for tutorials, and I didn't find a whole lot that were really useful. Maybe I just wasn't looking in the right spot. I wanted to start with just some really simple effects like basic masking, uh, garbage matting, uh, track matting, rotoscoping, whichever you prefer to call it. And I couldn't really find any in English that were really helpful. So I sat down and I forced myself to learn how to do it. And I'm here to make a little tutorial to help you guys understand kind of the basics of Fusion node-based software, at least how it helped, how I thought through it and how I helped understand what it was, and to help you guys learn how to do some basic masking. So I shot a little scene, which I took uh, our Sony FS7 and Atomos Ninja in front of recorder. I shot it in Cinema DNG, which is going to affect our image here in just a second. Uh, and I locked off the camera, and I did a scene where I walked into the office, and then I sat down with myself in three different places. This is pretty fundamental stuff, but at the same time it really helps understand the basics of the work. So you can see here that I started with a shot just of me, and I ended up, I've done a couple of these for practice, I ended up with myself in three different places, sitting at the back, and sitting uh, facing forward, and walking in and going around. Now I've already done a couple of these shots in Fusion, and it actually worked pretty well. I've been pretty impressed so far. The color correction is not finished, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I want to take you to the next step and kind of show you my process. Now, I wasn't expecting this when I recorded in Cinema DNG, but the files didn't come in all as one long clip. It came in as separate individual clips. So that's why you're seeing multiple clips across my screen. That's okay for our purposes because what I can do is it lets me break this up into a little bit shorter segments because rotoscoping can take a really long time. So I'm going to be focusing on this next section right after the walking me sits down. Um, and we have three different clips. We have the clip where I'm seated in the background. Uh, if I hide that clip, we have the clip where I'm seated in the gray shirt facing forward. And the bottom clip is the clip of me actually sitting. Now, this is my process that I use to record this. Uh, yours might be a little bit different, but I'm going to take you through the steps that I took to make these into manageable clips and do the process very easily. So what I did was, especially because these came in as separate clips, uh, I'm going to use my blade tool, which is shortcut B, and I'm going to split my top and my bottom layer all on the same timeline. The, so they're all the same length. Now what that does primarily is it makes the clips the same length and makes it very manageable for doing the rotoscoping. So to make this a new fusion clip, all I'm going to do is select all three of those. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new fusion clip. Now it looks like it just shrinks down into one clip and it did. So I'm going to flip over to my fusion tab. 
in the Fusion tab, um, this is what we come into. Now, if you're not familiar with Fusion, I want to talk about a few things, uh, especially if you're just getting started. Now, this was the very difficult thing for me to think of in terms of moving from After Effects to Fusion. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to right click on each of these little media clips. Media in 1, Media in 2, Media in 3. And I'm going to click on Show Tile Picture. What this is going to do in a minute, it will actually load up thumbnails of these different clips. Now, if you're used to After Effects, you know that you're basically thinking of going from top to bottom. So you would imagine this is the top layer, this is the middle layer, this is the bottom layer. What I had to wrap my head around was the fact that there's no layers. Um, the merge tool, which is used heavily in node-based compositing, that's kind of like where our layers come from. I have to imagine that as basically taking two layers and looking right above them. It's a weird paradigm, and I hope that makes sense. Um, it helped me make sense of things. Merge tools, they have a background and a foreground. So if you're doing things like green screen, you would put your uh, effects plate, the what you're compositing into the shot to replace the green, that would go in the background of the merge layer. If you are uh, putting the person on a green screen in front of that, you would put that in as the foreground of, of the merge layer. Now, the way these came in was I have three different clips. Now, each, every tool, every node, has these two little dots at the bottom. This is fundamental stuff. Those two little dots rep represent our viewers. In this case, you can see our media out viewer has a white dot on the right, and that means that's what's in our uh, media out. Now, that is our final shot. That is, after everything's been done, that's what's actually going to go back into our fusion clip in the edit tab. Uh, if I want to view something else, I can select a node and just hit the number one and it'll pop up or I can select a node and just drag it into the viewer and I can change my different views. Now that's really easy. I'm trying to get used to using keyboard shortcuts so you can also turn nodes on and off. So that's how you view the different aspects. And by the way, I'm really loving this um, I really like the way this is working, and overall, I've really enjoyed kind of learning some fundamentals in Fusion. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at these two clips. And by the way, you can have the same clip on in both viewers if you want. I want to look at these two clips. These are my sitting in the background and sitting in the gray shirt a little closer, and these are basically going to be the bottom two layers of my comp composition. So the way these are hooked in right now, uh, you'll notice that media 2, which is media in 2, that's in my left viewer, media in 3 is in my right viewer, they're not going to the same merge. I have to change that. What I'm going to need to do is I'm basically going to need to take these two and make those my bottom layer in my composition. If I'm thinking of this like an After Effects layer stack, those are going to be the bottom two clips, and the top clip is going to be me actually walking, in this case, actually sitting down. So these are connected, but I don't like the way they're connected at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse over these node connections, and I'm going to click on them, and that will break those connections. Now if we go to our media out again, we're going to see if we turn it on, there's nothing there because nothing's going into that selection. I'm going to go ahead and move this guy right here. I'll explain why I'm doing that in just a second. Now each node has various inputs and outputs. In this case, these media in, that's where we're loading our footage, so those only have outputs. Uh, the way you connect an input to an output is you can just click and drag. But one of the things that I highly recommend kind of practicing with is actually, like I know this is my very, very back plate, and that's the one that I want to be on the very bottom. I want to set this shot as my background. So I'm actually going to use my right click to drag my 
gray output onto my merge. I don't have to worry about where it is in there, but I'm going to make that my background. Now for my second clip, which is me in the gray shirt sitting a little bit forward, I'm going to do the same thing. Click and drag from the gray output to my merge, except I'm going to make that my foreground. Now we have these two guys, and they are living in the same space, but nothing's really happened to them. If I go to layer 2, all I'm going to see is media in 2, me in the gray shirt, because I haven't done anything to show the background. Think of this as just viewing the top layer without having anything happen to it yet. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add a mask to this. So I mask around the part that I want to cut out. Um, in Fusion, our mask tool is called either the Polygon tool or the B-spline tool. In my case, I'm going to use the Polygon tool. That's going to add a node in here. There's a couple of ways to do that. There are some commonly used tools up here, and you can actually see the Polygon tool is right there. You can also hold down Shift and Spacebar, which is the way that I'm trying to teach myself to do it. And this brings up a full list of every single tool. All of these are going to be nodes. And you can also click here and type in Polygon. And it's going to type in a Polygon tool. Now, when I go to this Polygon tool, nothing's connected to it, so at the moment it's not actually doing anything. And if I click on it and I put it in one of my viewers, like if I put it in Viewer 2, it's not going to do anything because I haven't actually drawn a mask yet. So, what I need to do is I need to take my Polygon tool and I need to decide where it's going to be, uh, where my mask is going to be between my two shots. So. For me personally, the best place I've found to do it is right down here by this chair, because I can follow this edge along here. And I'm going to go around around this trash can, up along the wall, back along the ceiling, and down. Uh, I don't like the viewers this small. I happen to be on a really large screen, which is nice. But you can click and drag and make the viewers bigger. And with my polygon tool selected, I'm just going to start drawing. I'm going to click and I'm going to draw... I'm not actually, not actually drawing, by the way. I'm, I'm not dragging, I'm just clicking. Uh, and if I hold down Control and scroll up, I can zoom in closer. If I just scroll, I go up and down throughout the image. So I'm going to come around down here, come around down here. I've, I've really gotten to, te to uh, train myself to use the keyboard shortcuts. That's one of my goals. Now I'm just going to draw a mask. And what this mask is going to do currently is nothing, because once again, our polygon tool is not actually attached to anything. We have an input and an output. The only thing I'm going to worry about is the output right now. The output is a little gray box. I'm going to right click on that and drag that down to my merge where I connected uh, my two scenes. And I notice I get a third option here. The third option is Effect Mask. Go figure, I want it to be a mask. So when I click on that, nothing seems to happen because my viewers are still looking at just those two shots. But if I go to my media out and I put that in my media out, I'm going to notice that everybody disappears. Now, it's not an uncommon problem. This happens in Resolve 2. To get that changed, I have to invert the mask. So I'm going to select my Polygon tool, and on the right-hand side you have your selector. Uh, excuse me, your inspector. This is where pretty much the controls, if you think of the effects controls and after effects, these are the effects controls for each of your nodes in Fusion. Um, I have my Polygon tool, I have it selected. I have a checkbox right here that says Invert. So when I click Invert, suddenly, hey, everybody shows up. And if I click out in the middle of nowhere, uh, this is the flow space, by the way. I should have pointed that out earlier. This is the flow area. This kind of shuts up where your nodes are. Suddenly, I have myself in the scene twice. Pretty straightforward, not too hard at this point. But the problem is I have this third clip that I want to bring in. And I'm just going to leave my output... I'm just going to leave my output sitting there. Because I actually like that view at the end. 
And my third clip, which is me sitting down, if I scrub through, I have a timeline just below my viewers. Uh, one thing that I did have to adjust to is the timeline is for the entire node, is for the entire work area. So this shows what's happening as I scrub through this. It's showing not only what's happening in the selected media in, it's also showing the selected, uh, the same time in every other thing that I have selected or showing. Not a big deal, but it was something to kind of wrap my head around because I'm used to having an individual window with a timeline for just that window. This timeline is for the entire comp, for the entire composition. Uh, and that's actually kind of nice, because I don't have to worry about being in one time frame in one window and different in another window. Maybe that was just me that had that problem, but there it is. So what I have to do is I have to go in here, and currently, when I select the polygon, I see the mask, by the way, Currently, this media in of me sitting down um, isn't connected to anything. So it's not going into my composition at all. It's just kind of sitting there. Notice I have my two merges right here. The first one is where I'm setting up my two plates that are actually going to become my backgrounds. Those are merging into one. And I'm actually going to take the output of that merge. Think of it as taking those two layers. It's almost like a pre-compose. That's a good way to think of it. I hadn't actually thought about that. Merge is almost like pre-compose. You can actually take a bunch of items, put them together, and that single output can be adjusted, can be sent somewhere. It's not a perfect example, but that's kind of one way to think of it. By the way, I'm saving often because um, it's still in beta. Uh, Resolve 15 is still in beta, so I have had it crash on me before, and hopefully that won't happen here, but we'll see. But I'm taking those objects, those nodes, I'm kind of done with those. I don't really need them at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I am going to break the connection between these two merges, because I want to make sure these two merges are a background for my other merge. So I'm going to click on my, I'm going to right click on my output and drag to merge two, and I'm going to make sure that I set to my background. And it shows up in my media out, which I still have on my right-hand viewer. And I'm going to do a similar thing to make sure my media 1 is my foreground for merge 2. So I'm going to right-click on that gray box, which is the output, take it down to merge 2, and select the foreground. And now I show up because that's now my foreground, and I'm covering up everything else below it. Think of it like putting another layer on top of your pre-composed background layers. And again, I'm kind of I'm kind of using language to transition from After Effects to Fusion because that's what helped me. So if it helps you, great. If not, I'm sorry. And I'm also trying to not be too wordy because I tend to talk a lot and yeah, we'll see what happens. Now, what I'm going to have to do to make sure that I am just visible here is I'm going to have to set up another polygon, another polygon node just for this clip. And it's going to be a an effects a mask effect for my merge 2. So I'm going to check my timeline and make sure I'm at the start of my timeline. So I'm over here all the way on the left. And by the way, I do like that it's really simple. I can use my arrows to scrub back and forth frame by frame. That's actually really nice. Oh, and I went too far back. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to hold down shift and hit space bar. And I'm again going to type in if I can spell it right, polygon. So I'm going to create a new polygon tool. And this time, I want to go ahead and drag this. I'm going to right click on my output, drag this into my merge, and make it an effect mask again. And with my polygon tool selected, I'm going to drag, or I'm going to draw a mask around myself. So again, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And I might speed this up in the edit. Um, if you look, I know where my two objects that I don't want to cover are, which are my two people in the background. So the parts that I'm most worried about are on the left and right hand side of myself as I sit down. So one advantage I had in shooting this was we had absolute control over the lighting. The lighting didn't change at all because it was indoors and we actually didn't have any... Um, we actually didn't have any 
sun coming in. So the lighting is absolutely the same, which is really nice. That's going to become an impact in just a minute. Uh, something you might notice, though, there's some really dark areas in here. I'm wearing pretty dark clothes, and I have a pretty dark background. So before I go into my polygon tool, what I want to do is I want to make this a little easier to see the image. It'll make it easier for me to draw my mask and easier to see what's covered and what's not covered. So to do that, I'm going to grab another tool. By the way, I can right-click and say Add Tool. I'm still trying to teach myself the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to hold down Shift, hit Spacebar. That's kind of nice, because it's similar to Control Spacebar on Macs. This just happens to be Window, but I'm, I use both systems. Uh, the node I'm going to add is called a Brightness and Contrast node. Again, by itself, doesn't do anything. What I'm going to do... I'm going to actually take my media in input and I'm going to drag that into my brightness and contrast and you see it goes from the gray output square to the yellow input square and I'm going to take my gray output for my brightness and contrast, drag that into my merge set that as my foreground and nothing happened because I haven't set the examples yet. Now if I go in here and I select my Brightness and Contrast tool and I turn this all the way up, my image doesn't change at all because I'm still looking at the original image in my Media 1. So whatever I do downstream from that, it's upstream and downstream, and think of it like a, the way a river flows, if I'm up at the headwaters of the stream, I'm not going to see anything downstream if I'm stuck at the end, at the front. So instead, I'm going to go to my Brightness and Contrast, I'm going to hit 1, and suddenly my image is a lot brighter. By the way, recorded the Cinema DNG, which is a lot darker than it looks when you're recording, but it is fantastic to edit in. Throw that out there. I have, we have other videos about that. Check them out at your leisure. But that is where I'm going to increase my... I can decrease my Brightness and Darkness. I could actually change my saturation if I wanted to. I wonder if that would actually help me. No, I don't think so. Uh, I can also just reset the parameters. What I am going to do is increase my gain, so it makes it brighter. Now, when I finish the comp, I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to turn off the brightness and contrast. Specifically, I'm just going to delete that node and reconnect my media one to my merge because I'm not going to actually need that in the final comp. But for now, it's really going to help me uh, set up my mask and be ready to go for the next section. To set up my mask, I reselect my polygon tool and go up into the viewer, and I'm just going to draw my mask. So if you bear with me for just a minute, I'm mostly worried about the left and the right-hand side of this figure because that's where... Um, I'm most going to run into issues with running into the other people. So when I go to my head, I'm going to keep it a little bit loose, so that way I don't have to worry about dragging it around. And the only reason I can do that is because we shot it in completely controlled lighting environment. But we're going to see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control and scroll up so I can get in closer. And I'm just going to start drawing my mask. You can click and drag. I'm not worried about my head overlapping, so I'm going to be pretty loose about that. And one thing I've really enjoyed about Resolve versus After Effects, I'm immediately seeing the effects in my final merge view. So when I get onto this side, I'm going to start being a little more careful. But how I do this, I'm going to put a few more control points because... I know that I'm going to start running into my own leg over here. Which sounds funny when you say it that way. How many of you have ran into your own legs? Don't answer that, because that might embarrass you. You know, my wrinkly jeans. If I see something that has a lot of detail in it, I might zoom in so I can get a little closer. Make sure I have enough control points to really adjust it where I need. Uh, and I can see in my final viewer where the feet for the back person are so I know exactly how far I need to go down 
And I do happen to know it's down about here. If you just click, it'll make a control point. If you click and drag, it will let you bezier that a little bit. Make it a little softer curve. Oop. You can hit Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac to undo. Now when I get down here, I'm past my feet. I'm past my feet from the background person. So I want to make sure I get some of my shadow on this floor because that's something that can make or break a uh, comp or things like shadows. So I'm going to go fairly wide around my feet. And when I come back around, this is when I'm going to start getting it a little tighter. I do happen to know our legs get really close, so I'm going to have to be careful about this part. And you can adjust this later on. But for the moment, I'm just going to make it as tight as I can. I will probably speed this part up because that way you don't have to sit here and watch me make this curve. And you're also going to learn how much I hate rotoscoping. It's one of my least favorite things to do. But at the same time, it's one of those fundamental skills that really helps you learn other skills. Because if you can understand the hard way to do it, when you learn the easy way to do it, the easy way doesn't become a crutch. I'm going to make this pretty close. Getting back around towards the front, the top, and when I click on that initial point, there I am masked. Now, yeah, I stand out really badly against the background. That's partly on purpose, because I'm going to have to go in here and rotoscope this thing so that we can actually see the difference between the two. And if I zoom in here, it just makes it a whole lot easier when we can actually see the difference between these two. Now, I'm going to save because, again, it's a beta, and you want to make sure you're not losing anything. Now comes my not as much favorite part, which is the actual rotoscoping section. So I'm going to make sure I have my polygon tool selected. I'm going to go a frame forward, and I'm going to see how I shift. Now, notice, I'll just do this as an example, um, the mask I love that it's reflected immediately in my media out viewer because that way when I change one of the points it immediately shows what's happening. Um, again, this is the not as exciting part. You can drag around multiple control points to select them all at the same time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing this mask in uh, if I had changes in lighting, this would be a lot more difficult. And I do pay attention because where my mask is out here, it's cutting off the elbow of the jacket, so I have to make sure as we go around that that elbow stays visible. This would be a lot harder if I didn't have the brightness and contrast on. If I was just on my original clip, because it's really hard to see the difference between my elbow and the door. And again, this is putting the original clip up in the viewer. I can also take my brightness and contrast and drag it up into the viewer and see that. Make sure you reselect your polygon and keep going. And one thing that I've found that I really like is keeping the section that I'm working on in the same part of both viewers I could actually be closer in this one if I need more detail work, but I can immediately see whoops, the reaction as I add these guys in, and I move these points around. And it crashed. This is why we save early, save often. So, give me just a minute.
destroy. We had a couple of crashes, so we're going to pick up where we left off. Uh, I am rotoscoping the portion of myself, which right now is not too bad. Uh, it's a remember resolve at this point is a beta software save early and save often. I've been saving pretty much every single time I finish a frame because each frame can take two or three minutes which doesn't sound like much until you add it all up and then it's a lot of work that you might lose so be careful save a lot and there is apparently some issue with certain graphics cards causing resolve to crash um, if you change the rendering to CPU only instead of using the GPU that can prevent that for now. They actually had that happen multiple times before I found a solution for it. That's pretty good. I can deal with that. Save. Go to the next frame. My personal recorder actually shut off for a minute there, so I don't know what I lost. I hope not much of anything, but we'll see. Just FYI. I'm going to start around my head and bring that in because that's a good safe place to start. And I don't have to be too exact with it because I know I don't ever get my head close to each other. And again, this is why I hate rotoscoping. For those of you that don't know, rotoscoping is manually adjusting the keyframes on a mat, frame by frame. It's a really good skill to learn, but at the same time, it's not even hard, it's just time consuming. It's definitely not a hard skill. It does take a lot of practice to get really good at it, to see where your edges are versus where you want them to be. But it definitely takes a lot of time. Okay, with that, this comes up here. And if anybody has a tutorial for automatically tracking a mask like this, I would be more than appreciative if you'd share it with us. Let's make a collaboration. Uh, I am trying to avoid creating new mask points. That's just a personal preference of mine. I don't... I've had issues in the past with certain programs having issues creating additional mask points during a mask. I'm going to look at this, see how close my feet are. Ooh, if this me sets my foot down, I'm in trouble. But I'll play with that when I get there. In the meantime, let's stick about right here. I know there are automatic mask trackers, and I know Re Resolves is really good, especially at face detection. They have some fantastic tools for face detecting masks. For color grading, I know, I'm assuming that it would be just as good for special effects work as well. I haven't tried it yet. Like I said, I'm just getting into Resolve, or I'm just getting into Resolve and Fusion.
And you know what? I'm actually gonna stop right there because the basic process is the same. And one of the nice things about Fusion being incorporated into Resolve is there's no round trip. All you have to do is jump back over into the Edit tab and you can see the changes. Now, you might notice I have a big bright spot in the middle of my comp. So all I have to do to fix that is go into Fusion. I'm gonna save this, make sure I have it saved. And if I just delete that brightness and contrast, it actually did reconnect straight to my merge. Um, and I go back into my edit, and there's three of me. So have fun with this. It's it's actually a really good system. I'm really impressed with what Blackmagic is doing, really taking their color correction software and making it so much more. And the price they're giving it for and the products they're including it with, um, they are really poised to dominate the market for what they're doing. Uh, this is Michael. I'm having a lot of fun making these tutorials, and I hope that you will join me next time. So, thank you, and we'll see you on YouTube. Hey guys, this is Michael. Uh, I had a few final thoughts uh, about Resolve and the project we just did. I'll try to be brief as we can. Um, rotoscoping takes a really long time, but it is a really good skill to learn when you're combining multiple objects without using things like a green screen. Now I want to do a green screen tutorial, I want to do... Uh, I might try another take on this to see if I can use a difference key to uh, show an easier way to do this. That's something I'll talk about if I get to that tutorial, but uh, overall I'm really enjoying using Fusion and uh, DaVinci Resolve 15. Uh, I still have a lot, lot to learn about color correction and visual effects, but I'm very excited about what's going on with it and I'm very excited about something like the Blackmagic Pocket Camera, which is part of the reason why I want to master Resolve a little more, because the workflow is really good. Started to do some of my own editing on here, uh, on Res Resolve, and I'm very excited about it. So, thank you, uh, and we'll see you next time.